Good morning, everybody, and welcome to whatever the hell I can call this. As you guys, I'm sure, are well aware, it's been a little while since I've uploaded a video, and this is why I've been working on this. It is a stereoscopics display that I've been working on for the museum. Uh, stereoscopics being the science of using two different images, one for each eye, to fake a 3D image. Now, the most well-known version of that right now would be the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. The Oculus Rift just having gone into pre-order mode for $600. It's a hell of a lot of money, honestly. Um, so I have set up the possibility to go around actually displaying the stereoscopics, including a full functional version of the Oculus Rift for the people who don't have it, haven't seen it yet, that kind of thing. Because really, VR is only going to catch on if people actually see it working. So it's not going to be like, oh, you walk into Best Buy and you see one of those 3D TVs that nobody gives a crap about. Uh, this is something where you're actually going to have to sit down and play. So you're actually going to have to go looking for it. So that's what I'm setting up. Uh, I have an opportunity at a place in Pittsburgh called Game On. Uh, they do this really neat thing where you can get them to bring out a whole bunch of like video game consoles to a party or something. Specifically, uh, we had them over for a bar mitzvah. We had set up at uh, the building that I work at. Uh, I'm the network administrator, so that's how I got to see it. I had to make sure that they had internet connection and all that fun stuff. Uh, and we started talking. We gave him a tour of the museum. Uh, we started talking about specifically this guy right here, the uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy. And that got us talking into, you know, spread into VR and the Oculus Rift and stuff like that. And he invited me to do a display for the Oculus Rift for his company. He does, like, uh, also professional video game tournaments, that kind of thing. Call of Duty, stuff that I really don't actually play. So that's what I've been working on, getting a setup like that. And we've kind of, I've, I've expanded the idea from just the Oculus. Because if I just had the Oculus going, it would be a little weird. It would seem like I should be working for Oculus, and obviously I don't. So I've extend, extended this to be an extension of the museum itself, so I have as much as I can for stereoscopics. And uh, I'll take a quick walk through what all I have for this setup here. So here we have the primary display table. This is a little bit more cluttered than I would like it to be. Because, well, I'm in my studio, and our studio is kind of this corner that I don't really have much space to work with. It's just for recording video. It's not really for recording or for display purposes. So uh, what I have, I have the standard 3D glasses that you, everybody's used to seeing. We have the, you know, cardboard ones that you get, you know, that you used to get at the old movie theaters. And back in the 80s, people actually wore them as kind of like a fashion thing. I don't understand it. I also have clip-on ones for people with glasses, like you know me. We have the active shutter 3D glasses that the Sega Master System used, which I would like to actually have as an active display uh, if I have the space to do it. But it requires a CRT monitor because it aligns itself with the refresh rate of the power, so 60 hertz refresh rate, which is something that modern TVs just don't do. They do things differently. So it has to be your CRT, so that's kind of heavy and takes up a bit of space. Of course, I have a 3DS because, you know, why the hell not? It's 3D. We, of course, have the Virtual Boy because this is actually one of the more impressive VR kind of setups. It's not really VR. It's more 3D. But it's one of the more impressive ones from its day, even though it was considered a horrible failure. But it was still really nice. Uh, we have the uh, Viewmaster, which of course everybody has played with one of these. You know, back in the day when they were kids, uh, basically you just look through the lenses. You flip the little lever here to switch between 
a bunch of different... Ooh, I have a whole bunch of them in here. Ooh, they're kind of stuck. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, beside that, we have the new Viewmaster, which is actually one you plug your phone into. So it works kind of like the Gear VR or the Google Cardboard. But it's specifically for Viewmaster, which I thought was really cool. It even has on its side, which side? There it is, a lever that you push down to do things with. It's actually, there's a touch thing inside of here. So if you push down the lever, it pushes out its little uh, electrosensitive, basically, finger that you can use. And it's actually pretty cool. Um, it works okay. It seems to have the same kind of problems as Google Cardboard does on my phone, where it uh, has serious drift. Of course, we definitely have to have Google Cardboard here. As you can see, I made it out of Pen Pilsner box. And yeah, we covered that in a previous video. We have the Samsung Gear VR, because of course, that's one of the big names in VR at the moment. We have the VR1 from Zez, Zez, Z-E-I-S-S. -S. Yeah, Z-E-I-S-S. -S. I have no idea how to properly pronounce that, but it's kind of like a plastic version of the Google Cardboard. Uh, it's got little trays that you put your phone into and then slide into the side of the thing. I only have one for the Samsung, the Galaxy S5, which I, of course, don't have an S5. And then, of course, we have the Oculus DK1 over here, which is just for display purposes, because the active one fell off the chair, actually. Put you back real quick. Uh, I moved the chair because I was doing things. There we go. Basically, I sit it on the chair. I just sat it on the chair for calibration purposes. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we have an Oculus DK2 on active display, so you could actually play with it. It's plugged into my brand new whoop, way too damn expensive laptop. And I say way too damn expensive because, you know, $1,500 is kind of expensive for a laptop, but it's kind of required to run the Oculus since most laptops will not support the Oculus software. Now, I have that also set up to a nice tiny DLP projector so that other people can watch what is going through the Oculus Rift at the same time. So it can be more of a communal experience than just one Oculus Rift alone could be, which would actually be a little disappointing. You come in with your friends, you know, joking, making fun of, but only one person can see it go. It, it would be a little disappointing, so I kind of set it up that way. And I think that's it. So that's my VR display. As I said, this is a lot tighter than what I would like, but that's only because I'm constrained by the studio. I have every intention of expanding outwards a little bit, putting the virtual boy at the edge of the table so I can have a chair there so people can actually use the virtual boy. I would like to have the master system set up so that it can actually be played. Uh, I want the projector to actually be at that end of the table and the projector screen over there. That way, you don't have to get in front of the projector screen because right now, to do like anything with the DK2, you have to get in front of the projector screen and get in the way, and I don't like that. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to see how well I can expand out. Of course, I have a decent pair of headphones to use with the Oculus Rift because, seriously, just seeing it is only half of the experience with the Oculus. You have to hear it, too. So, yeah. And then I have a uh, Steam controller that I picked up that's uh, for games where you actually you know, interact with the game itself. Uh, as I have up here is just a roller coaster demo because it's just something I can slap you know, slap up on the screen, nice and easy, ready to go. But I do have other games set up on here that can actually be played. There's actually a really cool one called In Cell, which is just one of those racing games that you, you know, race on a cylinder kind of thing. You race on the outside of the cylinder, and you can go back and forth. You don't control your forward or backward motion at all. 
uh, just you left and right and that kind of thing. And it would just be a generic, boring, me too racing game if it wasn't for the VR integration. So with the VR integration, it's actually pretty cool. Um, what else do I got? I got Euro Truck Simulator 2 um, and something else. What was that other game called? Hang on. Oop. It was Hoover, Revolt of Gamers. Now, I've done a video on Hoover, and I've done a video on Euro Truck Simulator. I might do an in-cell uh, one, and I might do one on the No Limits roller coaster game that I'm using as a display at the moment. Uh, but whoop, I just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, so uh, that's my VR setup. That's what I've been working on. And hopefully, now that I actually have this set up, um, and really the only thing left that I have to do is find some more software for it. Because I really don't, there really isn't that much software for the Oculus Rift just yet. Uh, probably because everybody's holding off for the final release of the developer's kit, the uh, 1.0 version. Right now I'm running on the 0.8 version. And the vast, vast majority of software that used to work on the Oculus is designed for pre-0.6. And I don't intend on using that. I would like to keep up with the more modern software. So I don't intend on using the older version of the developer's kit. And that means that I don't have access to probably 90, 95% of software that goes with the Oculus, which is a little shame. Um, the one game I really, really wanted to do, uh, Vanguard V. I did a video on this before. Uh, absolutely amazing VR experience. I don't think they exist anymore. Their website's still there. I went to buy, some, buy the beta from them. No, alpha. They're actually using their terms properly. I went to buy the alpha from them. I can't. Uh, their pay system is broken. Um, so I emailed them and pointed out that their website was slightly broken. And then I asked them if uh, they had kept the alpha up to date and worked with 0 0.8 of the Oculus Rift developers kit. And I never got an answer back from them. And they haven't updated their website since at least August. So I don't know if they even still exist, which is a horrible shame, because that was an amazing game for VR. I'm very disappointed. Um, and of course, Valve hasn't been keeping up with the software either. So Half-Life 2, Team Fortress 2, they don't work with the Oculus in the updated version. They probably work with the pre-0.6 developer's kit. But again, I don't intend on doing that, which is also a little bit of a shame because I really wanted to do Team Fortress 2 on the Oculus, but it doesn't work. Uh, and of course, Valve has been focusing on the Vive, so I kind of don't expect uh, Valve software to work on the Oculus, at least initially. Maybe, maybe they'll expand, but I get the funny feeling that it's not going to work on the Oculus because they're going to be focusing on the Vive, which is kind of dickish actually, but you know, it's their software, it's their choice, whatever. Uh, so yes, I'm going to end the episode here. I'm going to say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.